Hey, watch fans, welcome back to the number one, the number one watch channel on the uh, the interweb. Today, we're going to be reviewing the uh, the day date, the day date 36, the original. This is the original fuck off watch. That's right. Uh, what is this watch all about? The day date 36, kind of a controversial watch. Uh, now, it's been eclipsed, of course, by the day date 40. That's Taking uh, taken the, the top rung as the fuck off watch. Now, uh, I think I have to give full credit to Archibald Chesterfield III for coining that term. But uh, basically, it's a, what is a fuck off watch? It, basically, it's a watch you wear that you put it in somebody's face and say, hey, look at this. I'm better than you. <laughs> now, if you guys have seen that movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know, the famous Rolex scene, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, you, you want to put this in somebody's face and say, look, this watch costs more than your car. Now, um, speaking of values, uh, this is actually one of the worst investments you can ever make. Now, this watch, uh, I originally bought this on, it had a black, actually, no, this has had a couple of dials. It came with a champagne dial. Uh, when I got it, I had actually the dealer change it out for a black dial with gold Roman numerals because that was the look in the late 90s. And, uh, and I, then I changed it for this blue dial which is the blue sunburst dial. Uh, of course, factory. Don't, I don't want to hear any comments about, uh, you know, that this is a Fugazi dial. I know all you guys like to say that all well, my watches are Fugazis, but uh, this, is, this is the real deal. Uh, now, let's talk about what is, this, what is the purpose of this watch. Why does anybody buy a day date? Why does anybody buy a day date? Come on, it's because you want to you wanna show off. That's what it is. Uh, and, you know, we all go through that phase once in a while. It's an ego thing. Now, you know, I got this when I was, you know, I don't know, mid twenties. Um, you know, business was going pretty well, and uh, I got, I started getting into watches back in, uh, you know, uh, late nineties. Uh, and uh, my first purchase it was as a combo combo meal deal, a uh, uh, Rolex steel. Uh, what is it? The Oyster, you know, the regular whatever it is, the Oyster, you know, the basic Oyster, uh, with the. Uh, I think I had I think it had Roman numerals. That's right, because Roman numerals, uh, and a Patek Calatrava with a hob nail, just the um, manual wind. So I did a combo meal deal, and for those two watches, I paid I believe six grand for those two watches back then. I think that's what it was. And for this watch, I think I paid also about sixty five hundred for this watch. Um, and after that, I was kind of my appetite was sated for a while, and then I sold off those watches. Uh, and I kept this. I kept this. Um, now I've, 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 I haven't really worn it that much. You know, it's been on the winder. The date is wrong. It's been on the winder for the last couple of months. I haven't been wearing it. Uh, now, uh, one of the reasons I don't wear the watch is, quite frankly, it's got the jingly jangly bracelet. It's a little heavy. It is heavy. Okay, um, it's gold. It's very heavy. And look, it's it's too flashy. I mean, this is pure trash. Now look, there is a way that you could wear this. There is a way you can wear this. You can pull it off. Now I'm actually I'm, I'm wearing this same outfit I was wearing earlier. It actually comes in handy. Now, look, if you're going to wear this watch, it is two ways. Okay, the, the the reality of this watch today is, and the reason I bought it back then is, you know, it's kind of an ironic watch. Okay, it's kind of a it's 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 louche. Okay, it's not you don't wear this watch because you want to impress like people like average. This is a watch that imp it's kind of something. It's like a, it's like your fifth watch, okay? It's sort of like okay, you're collecting a '70s artifact. Uh, you know, it's sort of like uh, you know, if you're like a now. By the way, and I when I bought this, my thesis was in the uh, late '90s. Um, this watch was six grand. A steel Daytona was about nine grand. Uh, it was always over retail, and I thought, wow, how could this watch? How could a gold Rolex be? cheaper than a, a stainless steel watch. Well, little did I know, but, uh, and I thought at the time that gold was gonna be making a comeback, gold prices were gonna go higher, and of course, that was the bottom of the gold market. Now, um, I was right on the trend. Now, it took, I don't know, 15, 16 years, uh, and the value, what's the value of the watch today? The value of this watch today is maybe 10 grand, 12 grand, uh, and I did service it recently, that was 600 bucks. Uh, so it's a horrible investment. In 20 years, 20, 25 years almost, I can't believe I'm saying that. 25 years, it makes me feel old. But 25 years, this thing only doubled. That's not a good return on investment, my friends. 
horrible return on investment. I do believe there is a possibility that these things could pick up because of gold prices. That's the only, that's the only real catalyst for these things moving. Uh, but yeah, look, the reason I bought it was because I thought, look, yellow gold, this one was completely, by the way, if you remember back in the 90s, yellow gold was completely out of favor. Everybody was into the white gold or platinum, whatever it was. And I said, you know what? These things, I, I, I think it's going to make a comeback, the 70s look. And sure enough, I was right. And all the hipsters started buying them in the mid-2005. You had Mark Jacob, you know, the famous fashion designer, other guys. Um, this was kind of like a, a thing if you had it on the black, especially with the black Roman dial. Um, now, again, this is... Um, but who should be buying this watch today? There's really a couple of categories. Number one is, uh, if you're... Uh, you could wear it, like, in the unironic way, which is if you, like, let's say you're a pimp, like a, you know, mid-level pimp, uh, or you're a, uh, you know, like a, a, a mid-level drug dealer, uh, or you're, like, 70 years old, uh, and, you, you know, you, you this is like the watch that you bought in back in the 80s or something. Uh, or, you know, you're like, you know, I don't know, your, your granddaddy from Texas who made money in the Earl business. He left it for you. Uh, you inherited from your grandpa, grandpappy in Texas uh, in the Earl business. Um, yeah, you, you know, or, you know, or you could be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you could wear this in the, uh, you know, kind of stylish way. And now here's the thing. You can't wear this watch. This is the mistake I see a lot of guys making. You can't wear this watch with a tracksuit uh, like, uh, you know, Tony Soprano, okay? You can't wear this watch with a tracksuit like this, okay? If you're like a guy in your 30s or 20s or 40, let's say, the only way you can wear this watch is you can't wear this with a tracksuit. You can't wear this with your fucking flip-flops and your cargo shorts and your baseball cap. The only way you can wear this is if you're wearing a, you know, you're wearing a bespoke suit. You wear, you know, uh, you got to wear it like with style, okay? You can't wear it. And then if you're wearing it like this, people will think, oh, okay, this guy's intentionally wearing it. Like, you know, the right people, okay? Not not the stupid people. But they'll they'll, they'll kind of get it. They'll get it. That this is kind of like, you know, you're probably your fifth or sixth watch. By the way, you see this little gap? Yeah, this needs to be fixed. This is what happens with these old watches. The bracelet's all like a rainbow. Um, now, um... Bottom line with the, the day date, horrible investment. Uh, do not buy this as a maybe actually if you can get this for 10 grand, I'd buy it. Now, the only way you can wear this really is on a uh, strap uh, like this. See, do you see how much better a, a, a gold Rolex looks on a, on a suede strap? Uh, now, this is of course the uh, turnograph. Very rare to find a turnograph in this pristine condition. This is like a late 60s turnograph. Look at this, how crisp this is. You will never, I guarantee you guys will never, ever find another one in this crisp condition. This is what you got to watch for those hairlines, those hairlines. This is not a single scratch. Mint, baby. Um, now, now, if you take this watch, you take this Rolex, you take this Rolex day date, you put this on a suede strap, then you can wear it, okay? On the jingly jangly yellow gold bracelet, it's horrible. Now I'm gonna actually, I have, I do have a strap uh, that I'm gonna be putting it on. Um, I might have the video, or I might sell the watch beforehand. I don't know. I might trade it in again. Uh, these, these two, these two, okay, this, and the and the and and the uh, and the bluesy. These are kind of the the the, the stepchildren of the collection. Uh, now, what do these have in common? Come on, guys. This is these are the tackiest watches. This is this is this is the 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 the, the low hanging fruit, <laughs> the bottom feeder of the Rolex family, the two tone the two tone Submariner blue dial, and the uh, the day date thirty six millimeter with the with the uh, you know the bark finish. This is, you know, th these are kind of tacky watches. Or it could be Lush, L-O-U-C-H-E, for those of you who are, uh, you know, degenerates and don't know how to spell. I got to give it to you like that. But again, it's you got to wear it the right way. You can't wear this watch with your cargo shorts and flip-flops. You'll look like a schmuck. Uh, you got to wear it with a, uh, you know, you got to wear it with a, with, with a suit. And you got you really, you should put it on a, a nice, uh, like a suede strap, something to tone it down. It actually looks great. I think in one of my videos, I do have a, a, an image of this on a crocodile strap. Um, 
and that is the way to wear this. Then, then it actually looks okay. It actually looks really good. So um, I think one of the things you might consider if you do like this, if you do need a day date, you, you get the head only. You really don't want this. You don't want this garbage. You don't want this garbage. I mean, this is so tacky. Uh, I mean, again, I, I've probably in 25 years, how many times did I wear this? Uh, you know, I may have worn this, I may have worn this a hundred times at most, which is like what four times. I mean, very little, very, very. I, there was years I didn't wear it at all. Uh, actually, I, a girl I was going out with, I let her wear it for a couple of days. Of course, while I was with her, you know, I wouldn't trust, wouldn't trust this bitch to run off with a watch. But yeah, it actually, this watch does look good on chicks. Like, you know, because look, the wrist is like you know, the wrist is probably the size of mine. I, uh, you know, if you're a chick, you can pull this off because it's kind of you know, it's funky. It's like a bracelet, basically. Uh, it's kind of a funky look. It's got a certain, you know, uh, you know, it does have a, a vibe. It's got a vibe. Very, you know, if you're a that strong, independent woman like Ellen DeGeneres, uh, you can wear this. You know, it's got that kind of funky vintage vibe. Uh, you could definitely wear this watch. Uh, but again, if you're a guy, be very careful because again, the only way to wear this is if you have really good style. Like, of course. Yours truly, right? You got, you know, the Neapolitan uh, handmade shirt, suit. Uh, that's, you know, you wear it that way. Or, uh, you know, uh, you're a, you know, a 70-year-old guy. That's the only two ways to wear this. Um, quick, quick, uh, just I'll do a quick uh, little discussion of the turnograph. I've actually been wearing this uh, last couple of days. What a pleasure. And I tell you something. Uh, it's about the same weight as the uh, as the day date, but when you have it on a strap, it's such a pleasure to wear it because it's just the right amount of heft, without like you know too much. You you, you feel the presence, but it's not too much. Um, I think this is the ultimate watch. Now this I do believe has upside potential. Uh, I think these are, are are a great investment. The Turnograph, if you can get one, make sure you get it in crisp condition. The bezel, watch for the bezel. It's got to be crisp. No scratches, not not polished. Look, look, what a beauty! I think this is like new old stock. I don't. I I, I bet this watch was almost never worn, and this is a a fifty something year old watch. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, I only wear this watch uh, because it's such in great condition. I wear it under a, a cuff, under a, usually a sweater. So I've, I've been wearing a sweater the last couple of days. So it's a padded cuff, really, because it's the wool. And that protects the the bezel. You don't want to scratch this, because that is you could never get another one. This might be. This is probably the only one of its kind in the world. Um, you know. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Leave your nasty comments below. Make sure you click the like, subscribe button. Uh, I, I really need uh, you to uh, help make this channel, uh, you know, the number one channel, so I can, uh, you know, pay the bills. Um, Feel free to send uh, PayPal donations, Patreon. Uh, you know, I'll do watch reviews, whatever you need, my friends. I'm here for you because I'm all about the community. You know, I'm all about the community here. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one.